In this video, we're going to develop a few different examples of external direct products of groups. So I want to start with one that might be familiar to you, even though you've never known it as an external direct product of groups. Let's consider the group of real numbers with the operation being addition. And let's say I take that group and I take the direct product of it with itself. Uh, by the way, uh, sometimes I'll say direct product when I mean external direct product. Uh, in, in a lot of books, the terminology direct product is standard for this. Anyway, I'm going to take the direct product of the reals under addition with the reals under addition. So this is going to be the set of all a, b, such that a and b both belong to the reals. And the operation is defined in the way that you might expect. It's, it's by components. So if I have a1 and b1 plus a2, b2, and I'm using plus here because both of the group operations are addition. So it kind of makes sense to call the group operation on ordered pairs also addition. I could call it O plus, like I could do this, but I think that would just get tedious after a while. All right, so A1, B1 plus A2, B2 is going to be defined to be A1 plus A2, B1 plus B2, because that's how we do the operation in the direct product is we operate on the two first coordinates and we operate on the two second coordinates using the operation for each respective group. All right, so that's addition in the direct product. Anyway, the uh, reason I wanted to start with this example is because you probably know it from someplace else. If I have a coordinate plane and I have two elements, let's say uh, two, three, and one, negative four, I can actually think of those as being vectors. I can mark off coordinates here. So two, three, so that's 2, 3, and then 1, negative 4. So it did not plan that extremely well. <laughs> 1, negative 4. I could think of these two ordered pairs as being vectors. And the way that we add them, well, the way that we add them arithmetically is by just adding first coordinates and adding second coordinates to get 3, negative 1. But we can also add those geometrically. I can take this vector here. 1, negative 4, and append it to the end of this vector. So if I do that, I will get 1 and then negative 4. So I think I get something like this. Let's see, I'm probably not drawing that very well. There we go. So the sum would be this vector here. That vector is, or at least it appears to be, 3, negative 1, which is the same thing I got using just uh, algebraic addition of, of uh, ordered pairs. So anyway, uh, this direct product should be familiar to, to you. It's the uh, set of two-dimensional vectors over R. That is, this is R squared. Okay, but I feel like this doesn't really capture what we developed external direct products for because you learned about that in linear algebra and didn't need, didn't need to know about external direct products to come up with that. So here's another example, maybe a little more entertaining. Let's say I take the group Z mod 5 under addition, and then my other group is going to be Z mod 7 under addition. And I'm going to jam these together using a direct product. So let's take Z mod 5 cross Z mod 7, and then the operation is going to be if I have A1 and B1, where A1 belongs to Z mod 5, B1 belongs to Z mod 7, and I want to compose that with A2, B2, A2 coming from Z5, B2 from Z7. Well, that's going to be A1, A2, B1, B2. Uh, but A1 plus A2, this operation, this addition is taking place in Z mod 5. So I got to make sure I'm doing that mod 5. And then B1 plus uh, B2, sorry about that, B2, that's taking place in Z mod 7. So I could do a couple of examples here. Let's say I have... 3, 4, plus 4, 1. So I could say, oh, well, that's 7, 5. But I have to keep in mind, I'm doing these operations in Z mod 5 and Z mod 7, respectively. So 3 plus 4 in Z mod 5, that would be 7. But in Z mod 5, that's equivalent to 2. So I'm going to record it as 2. And then 4 plus 1 is 5. And I don't know a better way to express that in Z mod 7. OK, so again, this is in Z mod 5. This is in Z mod 7. Okay, here's another example. Let's say I have 4, 5, plus 4, 6. 
what would that be? Well, 4 plus 4 is 8. In Z mod 5, that's equivalent to 3. 5 plus 6 is 11. And in Z mod 7, that's equivalent to 4. OK, so those are a couple of addition facts. But now we can do some kind of fun stuff. Well, first of all, we could ask, how many elements are in this direct product? How many elements? Well, the number of elements is going to be the number of ways I can pick an ordered pair A, B, where this is in Z mod 5, and this is in Z mod 7. Well, there's five ways of picking that, and seven ways of picking that. And those choices can be made independently. That is, I can pick any element for A out of the five in Z mod 5, and then after that, or for each one of those choices, I could pick seven possibilities for B. So this group is a group with 35 elements. Now, exactly which group with 35 elements, we don't know yet. Uh, it may be, I mean, it's going to be abelian because addition in each of those groups, Z mod 5 and Z mod 7 is abelian. But could this group be cyclic? It, it kind of feels like it's not because I'm adding in each coordinate and I'm trying to think, well, what element could I come up with that will generate the whole group? But I don't know that there isn't such an element. So that's something that we might have to investigate. So we're going to leave that question open for right now. But for, just as a teaser, uh, let's ask the following question. If I write down an element like this, what is the order of it? What is the order of 1, 0? Well, to figure that out, I need to take powers, or in this case, since I'm thinking of this addition-wise, I need to take repeated additions of 1, zeros. So here I get 2, 0. If I add three of these together, then I get three zero. If I do four of these, I'm just going to represent using multiplication notation. Four of those added together would be four zero. And then five of these added together would be five zero. But five in Z mod five is equivalent to zero. And this is my identity because adding zero zero to anything gives me the same thing. So the order of this element in this direct product is 5. I can also come up with an element, namely this one, whose order is 7. And then maybe if I combine those elements, I'll get something with a different order. Who knows? I mean, one thing that we have gone over is that the order of any element of a group of order 35 has to divide 35. So it's got to be either 1, 5, 7, or 35. So anyway, more investigation of that to come. Just wanted to introduce the idea of Z mod M cross Z mod N. Okay. One more example, just to show that direct products don't have to be abelian. Let's say I take D4 and cross it with S3. Just kind of a random thing to do. All right. In this case, my ordered pairs, my elements of the direct product are going to be ordered pairs where the first thing is an element of D4, so a symmetry of the square, and the second thing is some permutation. So just as an example, let's write down h and then 1 2 okay so that's valid because h is one of my reflections in d4 it's the reflection across the horizontal axis and then 1 2 is a permutation in s3 and let's say i compose that i'm going to use circle dot here because now we really are hybridizing the uh, group operation like we have composition here and composition here but they feel like very different things so let's say that i have h 1 2 and then over here I have, let's say, um, R90, comma, 1, 2, 3. So if I want to compose those, then my answer is going to be H, R90. And then my second coordinate is going to be 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to work out the permutation first just because I prefer those. Uh, the permutation... Well, what does 1 do? 1 is going to go to 2, and then 2 gets passed over here. 2 goes back to 1. So I think 1 is fixed. 2 goes to 3. 3 gets passed over here. 3 does nothing more. So 2 goes to 3. And I'm going to guess 3 is probably going to go back to 2, but let's check. 3 goes to 1. 1 gets passed into this cycle. 1 goes to 2. So yes, 3 goes to 2. And then what about HR90? Well, let's just work this out. 1, 2, 3, 4... R90 is going to take that to 1, 2, 3, 4. And then H is going to take that to 1, 4, 2, 3. So it looks like what I'm getting there is, I think 2 and 4 are staying fixed from here to here. 
and one and three are getting switched. So I think that my reflection is across this axis, which Galleon calls D. So that there would be D. All right, so I just multiplied these two elements, H12 and R9123 to get this. Now, why you would ever jam these two particular groups together, I, I truly don't know. Uh, it does give you a group. It gives you a non-abelian group because I promise you that if I did these, uh, this multiplication in the opposite order, I would get different answers, probably both here and here. Although just getting a different answer in one of the spots is enough to prove that this group's non-abelian. But it's a non-abelian group whose order is eight times six because there's six, cho six choices for what goes here in the second spot, eight choices for what goes in the first spot. And that's a group of order 48. So the, the main point that I want you to take away from this is that this, this idea of an external direct product is a way of coming up with Frankenstein's groups made of groups that you already know. By the way, it's Frankenstein's monster. The name of the monster is not Frankenstein. I don't know why I felt that necessary to put in a group theory video, but people often make that mistake. So anyway, these are like Frankenstein's groups because I'm patching different components together to make a new monster.